Recently, we made a full painting tutorial for Commander Farsight, probably the coolest tower around. And whilst doing some research for this video, I discovered something in the lore that I didn't really know up to that point, and that was that Commander Farsight was the first tower to bring humans into the Tau Empire to fight as auxiliaries. Now, this is a really cool bit of lore that Games Workshop makes rules for every now and then and puts some white dwarf and things. And basically, it's like having a squad of guardsmen in your Tau army with a few upgrades for various Tau weapons amongst the troops. And the cool thing about something like this is that they don't actually make models for this, so you have to go and make your own, meaning that what you end up creating is a complete custom squad that's unique to you in your army. And I love stuff like this, so in this video what we're going to do is have a go at making one of these soldiers that go with Vassar. Now to do it what we're going to do is combine some Cadian parts and some tower parts and see what we come up with, and in the end we're going to have a really cool unique miniature that's actually really fun to make, especially if you know someone that collects the Astra Militarum because guard players hate these troops, so if you want to wind your friends up this video is for you. Hope you enjoy it, let's get to it. So as I mentioned, I want to make this miniature using Acadian miniature as the basis, and that's because I really like the idea of a guard regiment defecting to the Tau Empire and taking all their equipment with them, and the Tau doing some upgrades on it to make it a little bit more efficient rather than just replacing all their stuff. So that's what I want to have in mind as I do this. So that means starting out with the core of Acadian built, which I've got right here, and what I'm going to do is replace the upper body with a Tau Fire Warrior torso for that slightly more Tau aesthetic, but keep the Acadian parts around that. Now the tricky thing comes in here in that these days the assemblies of these models are quite different because you can see with the Cadian, you've got a lot of detail now that's sculpted onto the belt which goes down over the legs there. So you can't really cut beneath the belt because you cut that detail in half. And the Tau body here, you can see the belt sculpted onto it, so it's a little bit tricky to get them together. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is remove the upper part of the body, which is why I've only stuck the front on, so it completes the belt, but it's going to be nice and easy to cut through just there. So what I'm going to do now is use some clippers and snip away all that extra plastic that we got around the body above the belt. Then I can clean that up using a file to make sure it's nice and neat and flat. With that done, it's then time to move on to the towel's body, and here we need to remove the belt. So I'm just going to carefully remove a lot of the plastic with some clippers, then far down so it's nice and smooth. With these assemblies now prepared, we can stick them together, and if there are any gaps are visible, then it's time to use a little bit of green stuff to fill them in, or some grenades or something like that, just to make sure those gaps aren't visible. The glue is all dry, and you can see now the core of the body is coming together really nicely. I've stuck on a spare Fire Warrior backpack, and I've just used this little pouch here with a Tau symbol on it just to hide a tiny gap that was underneath there, but this is definitely looking the part. Clearly a human body, but wearing some Tau equipment. And so with that done, we can now move on to the arms. Now in this case, I want the guy to be armed with a LAS gun, but I just want to tau -fy it slightly as if it's been upgraded, so I've got a bit of a plan. The first thing to do, though, is to choose the arms, and I have test the fit here, and they are the right width apart, so it's going to fit just fine. You can see the arm's just going to slot on there and be held down there like that, and the other supporting arms going to go on this side just here. But the last gun definitely needs a bit of modification, so my plan is just to remove the end of the barrel around about there and make some adjustments, because there's a bar there that gives a nice clear point to cut. So what I'm going to do is cut off the end of the barrel following that bar as a guide, and then file it to make sure it's nice and smooth. And with that done, it's then time to add the end of a pulse rifle on, using a little notch on it to help guide where the cut's going to be, and again it's just a matter of making sure it's nice and clean and tidy. With that all prepared, we can then stick these two together, and during this phase it's just a good idea to take your time to make sure everything's nice and straight. And with that done, it's then time to stick the arms onto the body. Now those arms are glued on, you can see it's really coming together, and at this stage the end of the gun does really stand out from the rest of the LAS gun, but it's really because it's a different colour plastic and slightly different size. But once you've got some paint on there, that'll blend them together nicely. But I did just do a few other things on the LAS gun, put the little scope there from the pulse rifle on top, and I also removed any little bolts, or any rings or anything like that to give it a slightly more cleaner towel style aesthetic. Now with that done, we can move on to the next thing, which is going to be to put one of those big shoulder plates on the model. And what I've got in my bits box, I found, are some spare Farsight ones, which I've had left over from my own Farsight Enclave army. And here they are. What I'm going to do is put this onto the arm just there, like a classic Fire Warrior style. Now at the moment, that Cadian shoulder plate really does get in the way, so what we're going to have to do is just file that down a little bit at the moment, just to get it out of the way. So what I'm going to do is using my file, it just gradually file that away until it's reduced in size. And with that done, we can then glue on this shoulder pad. 
Now that shoulder plate's been glued on, the last thing to do is to stick a head on the miniature. My original plan here was to use one of the Breacher helmets from the Fire Warrior set because it's a slightly different shape from a regular Fire Warrior helmet, so not quite so iconic. But when test fitting it, to my eye, it still looks a bit too much like a regular Fire Warrior on there, not enough like a human. So I think instead we're going to have to use Acadian helmet. So I've got one prepared just here. What I have done is made sure to file away the wing skull design that appears on the forehead, but I've gone for this cool one that has the bandana over the face. I think it's quite cool, like he's trying to hide his identity from humans might be fighting against. So what I'm going to do is stick this on. So the plan is just to have it glued on right around here and it fits really nicely so it's a nice easy case of just sticking that on. So what I'm going to do is glue that on and then it's time to start painting the miniature and I want to paint it in the colours of the Farsight Enclave meaning that a red undercoat is going to be perfect. So I'm going to go outside, spray this Mephiston red and then we'll start painting it. And here we have our human auxiliary, undercoated and ready to be painted. Now when it comes to a miniature like this where there's a main dominant colour like red that you've undercoated the model with, it's always a good idea for that first step to paint the model with that same colour with a paint on version of it. And that's because the spray and the paint on version of the colour is always going to be different no matter what sort of brand you're going for here. So later on if you have to neaten up and you skip this step, you'll notice the difference between these colours. So it's just a quick thing to do, it doesn't take very long because the model's already red anyway so one coat will do it. So what you need to do for the Farsight Enclaves is choose a nice bright red. I'm going to go for some Sanguine Scarlet for this and to apply it to get a rough base coating brush just to get it on there quickly. So I'm using a medium base coat brush from Citadel. All you need to do is get your paint thinned down and ready and then start applying it onto the model. And we just need to make sure that we get it on all the armour. So plates such as this one right here for example. Don't worry about any of the detail because we'll neaten up as we add further base coat colours. Just make sure you get all the plating this colour at this stage. With that red established on there, we can now move on to starting to break this up by adding some other colours on there. And we'll start out with the fatigues and things, which should be black for Farsight. So in this case, I'm going to use some Death Reaper, so an off-black that we can shade down with a black wash later for a bit of shading. Once that's done, it's then time to pick out all the belts and things. In this case, I'm going to go for a khaki colour. So I'm going to use Sandstone. And then finally, what we can then do is introduce the secondary red that the Farsight troops have these days. So it's more of a wine red. So for this, I'm going to use some Galvorback red. But what we're going to do is start out with that black. So I'm using Death Reaper and to apply it I recommend going for a medium sized brush for this sort of detail. I'm using a size one here from Art Sopus, but any medium sized brush will do just fine. And with this make sure you thin it down your palette, make sure it's under control in your brush, being careful not to overload it. And then with this we need to start out by looking for all the clothing underneath the armour. So for example around here you can see we've got part of the jacket down here. What we want to do is just block it in, being careful of any armour we may encounter such as that knee pad, and just carefully working around it there like that. In addition we can use this colour for the parts of the boots that are exposed down here underneath the gaiters, so these parts right here. And also we can use it for some of the details on the gun such as around here. I finished base coating all that black now and I just want to draw your attention to the gun before we move on because what I've done here is specifically pick out that region right there with black because what I'm doing is breaking up that line that connects the two components where we stuck them together earlier on. So it just helps disguise it by having that red be on the front there and then carry on across the top. Now with that done it's time to move on to base coating some khaki details. This is going to be things that are like belts, pouches, the gaiters, all this sort of thing and in this case I'm using sandstone applied with a slightly smaller brush now for a little bit more control. So this is a size zero. You can see it just allows a bit more accuracy when blocking in these details. And finally I'm going to move on to a wine red just to break up some of the red details a bit by adding the secondary colour onto these areas. So in this case I'm using Galvorback red and just bear in mind when you're using this colour it is quite a weak one so you will need to apply it as two or three thin coats just to build it up. With this stage reached, what we've now done is applied all the colours on there that can share the same colour wash, which is going to be a black wash. So in this way what we can do is just put the black wash quickly all across the miniature and it will shade everything in one go. And once that's done we can then move on to the next selection of base coats that are going to use a different sort of wash. But what we need right now is that black wash. So I'm going to use some Oblivion black wash here and to apply it, because we're putting it all over the model, a big brush is perfect. So I have here a medium shade brush from Citadel. And with this you just need to load up a good generous amount on the brush and then start applying it all over the miniature. So for example starting here just apply it onto the model and start pushing it around making sure to work it into all the little details as you go along but also keeping an eye on it to make sure it doesn't pull much in any one particular area. And if you spot that happening just use your brush like a sponge. So for example on this shoulder plate just here you can see there's a big pool of it right there. 
As touching the brush to it, we can soak that away and redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature. Now, once this has been painted all over, you just gotta give it plenty of time to dry. In this case, I'd recommend 45 minutes. Once that black wash is dry, it's then time to move on to the next selection of colors that are going to use a different wash. And in this case, it's going to be a brown wash. So what we're looking at doing first of all is gonna be a few small golden details. And here I'm gonna go for some dragon's gold. Once that's done, we can then base coat the flesh. And here I'm gonna use some dwarven skin. And then it's time for that wash. And here I'm gonna be using some battle mud wash. But first of all, we need some gold. So I'm using some dragon's gold here. And to apply it, I'm going to be using my size zero brush, which is a good size for the sort of thing we're doing here. This is going to be for these sort of screw-like things that we've got on it, so these little gyros. So we've got them on the end of the barrel of our gun just here, and we just want to block them in at this stage. Next up, we can base coat the skin, and here I'm using some dwarven skin. And because we've got that mask over his face, it's a little bit tricky to get in here, so I've gone for a really small brush. Gone right down to a size double zero, just that accuracy to pick this area out. And with that, it's now time to apply the brown wash. So here I'm using some battle mud wash and it's a good idea to stick to your small brush here because we just need to keep this focused only on these new colors. So I'm still using the size double zero just to carefully introduce these areas with this wash. The brown wash is now dry too, so we can move on to the next phase of painting the model, which is going to be to layer it because we need to clean things up because Tao have that very clean aesthetic. So what we're gonna do is go back to that initial main color first, which in our case was Sanguine Scarlet, and then it's a good idea to do the same thing with the khaki. So I'm gonna go back to Sandstone for this. But we'll start out with Sanguine Scarlet and to apply it this time, I'm gonna go for my size zero brush. So a medium to small one here, because this time in the application of the paint, we definitely need more accuracy because the idea here is to just concentrate on the flat areas of the armor and be careful to avoid recess details. So for example, if we look in the breastplate just in here, you can see we've got all these recesses that we want to keep in shadow. So just concentrate on flat areas such as just here, just looking to keep in the middle and not quite drop into that corner where more wash has settled. Once that red's been cleaned up, we can then move on to doing the same thing on the khaki details. So here I'm going back to sandstone, and it's the same sort of technique where we just need to apply this color onto flat areas such as right here and be careful to avoid the recesses. Here we have the model with those two colors fully layered. So now what we can do is move on to layering three more. The first of these needs to be that wine red that we use. So it's back to Galvorback red for this. And then we should do the same thing with the gold by returning to dragon's gold. And then finally with the skin, once again, returning to our original color, which in this case was gonna be dwarven skin. But first of all, we need that wine red. So I'm using some Galvorback red here and to apply it, I'm going for the size zero brush again, because for the application of this one, we're doing basically the same thing as what we did on that brighter red earlier on. So first thing to do is to make sure you get some of this on the palette, thin down as ever, and then we just need to reapply it onto the areas that we originally base coated with this color, just taking care to avoid any recesses as we encounter them. Next up, we can return to the gold. So here I'm going back to Dragon's Gold to layer the little gyro details. And here we just need to apply a small amount onto the dome of these areas. So I'm using the size double zero brush for that accuracy as we do these parts. And then finally, we can return to some dwarven skin to layer the flesh. And here, once again, we're looking for flat areas, which is the back of the hand just here, and just wanna be careful to avoid dropping into those recesses. With the layering done, we can now move on to highlighting the miniature to really help all these details pop out. And the main one to do here is gonna be that bright red. So that's where we're gonna start. For this, what you need is an even brighter red to highlight it. So I'm gonna use some demon red and to apply it, go for your small brush. So I'm down to my size double zero once more because with this, for that clean tower appearance, what we need to do is edge highlighting here. So just make sure your paint's thin down and ready. Just testing it on the palette to make sure it's really nice and smooth and a little bit translucent too. And then be careful not to overload your brush with this paint. And it's always a good idea just to twist away the excess so that you bring the bristle to a nice point, then it's time to start looking for all the edges on the armor. Now, when it comes to towel, there are quite a few that you can get with the side of your brush, and the same is true with Cadians. So for a lot of this, it's nice and straightforward to use the side of the brush and skim along those edges, such as here on the shoulder plate, and this way you get a nice, neat, straight line following that edge to highlight it. But in many cases, you won't quite be able to get the side of the brush in there, such as on the breastplate here, and in this case, you just need to use the tip of the brush. So just line the miniature up and apply it in a downward motion like this, so you've got lots of control over getting that fine line on the edges of all these details.
Once you finish highlighting the bright red, it's time to move on to highlighting the wine red. And for this colour, Wasdaka Red is perfect. So that's what I'm going to be using here. Apply it again using the size double zero brush because the application should be identical to what we just did on that brighter red. So again, it's going to be edge highlighting. And so to do it, as usual, make sure your paint's thinned down, just looking for a little bit of translucency there. Then make sure your brush isn't overloaded. And with that, it's time to start looking for the edges on these parts, such as the shoulder plate right here. We want to go around all these edges once again, using the side of the brush where possible, but we can't quite reach such details with the side. It's time to use the tip of the brush, just changing the miniature's angle as we need to. Make sure you're nice and comfortable as you follow it around. Once that's done, we've now highlighted the more prominent areas of colour on the miniature, so it's just a matter of going through those smaller ones now. And we'll start out with the black details. Here we need a dark grey, so I'm going to use Dungeon Stone Grey for this. And then once that's done, we can highlight the khaki, and here I'm going to use some Temple Stone. Then we can move on to the gold. We want a nice pale gold here, so I'm going to use Glistening Gold. And for the skin, we want a lighter pale colour here, so I'm going to use some Elven Skin for this. But first of all, what we need is that grey, so I'm going to use some Dungeon Stone Grey here, and I'm sticking to the same brush to apply it, so it's that size double zero here. And with this, we're now looking for the creases and things that really stand out on the black fabrics. So once you've got the paint thinned and ready, just like with that edge highlighting earlier, we can start looking for such features. And if we look in the trousers, you can see there's all sorts of creases at the back just here. So look for the very peaks of them and pick them out with the tip of the brush. So for example, just along there and just along here, and these creases just here too. When you get to the more solid parts that are black though, such as the black details here in the rifle, then do this as an edge highlight, just like we did on the red. So looking for those sharp edges and following along each one. Next up, it's time to highlight all the khaki, and here I'm using some Temple Stone. And with this one, it's a matter of looking for the peaks of all the creases on these areas and just carefully picking them out. Now that's done, we can move on to the gold, and here I'm using some glistening gold. And first of all, on these gyros, what we should do is pick out the ridge in the centre by just applying a line either side of it, and then on the top of it where the light would catch, just pick out the crest of that circle around there. In addition, with this colour, we've now got a great opportunity to pick out the buttons on the uniform too, so we just need to dot these as well. And finally, it's time to highlight the flesh with some elven skin. So a nice pale flesh colour here, and all we need to do with this is just pick out the areas that stand out. And there we are, all those details are highlighted, so it's time to move on to some finishing touches. And the first of these is a really important one, and that is to introduce the spot colour into this miniature. Because for Farsight nowadays, you have a spot colour of a really bright glowing blue, which appears across a lot of troops in the army. And so if we take a look at Commander Farsight, you can see what I mean. If you look around this miniature, you can see there's a small amount of this really bright blue that appears on various details. And this colour should appear in every miniature in a Farsight army, because what it does, much like basing in a consistent manner, ties everything together visually, even if the trooper has a completely different colour scheme as long as that blue's on there, it'll just link everything. So we definitely need it on our trooper now. So to do it, I'm going to start out with a base coat of Curse Blue, then start highlighting on top of that with Raygun Glow, and then move on to a white. So here I'm going to use White Star. But first of all, we want that darker blue of the three, so this is going to be some Curse Blue, and to apply it, I'm going for my really small brush again, the size double zero. And in the case of Tau, with this sort of thing, what you should look for are little details that can be glowing lights, and well, that sort of thing, essentially. So. For example, on our miniature, what we could do is pick out the lens on the front of the scope on his rifle. So we're looking at this little raised up detail right here. But also we can look out for any little opportunities to pick out details like this as if they're glowing lights, such as these two little bumps that we've got in the backpack around here. Once you've picked out all the details you'd like to be this colour, the next thing to do is move on to a brighter blue. So here I'm using some Raygun Glow, and what we're going to do is apply some of this in towards the middle of each of these areas. So for example, on the scope there on the rifle, just leaving some of the dark blue still showing around the outside. Same is true on these smaller areas where we just want to dot this colour right towards the middle of each area. And then finally, it's time to move on to a pure white. So here I'm using some white star, and we just want to have a small amount of this in the middle of each of these areas. So just a tiny bit in the middle of this lens right here. And when it comes to the small lights, just a very small dot in the middle of each one.
And there we are, that spot colour's been applied onto the miniature, so now what we can do is a very small optional detail, and that is to paint the eyes. Now you certainly don't have to do this if you don't want to, and if you decide not to, all you should do is make sure that they're in shadow. So if they're a little bit light at this stage, just go for a dark brown or a black, just run it into the recess there and that'll be enough. But if you do want to paint the eyes, what you'll need is a steady hand, a fine brush, and start out with a pitch black. So here I'm going to use some Doom Death Black, then you'll need a pure white, so here I'm going to use White Star. But we'll start out with the black, so Doom Death Black, and to apply it with that really small brush, I'm using the size double zero here once again. To begin with, what we should do is paint the eyes black with a thin line on each one. So to do this, just get that paint nice and inky, remove the excess off on the palette there by just twisting the brush along to bring the bristles to a nice point. And then it's time to make sure that you've got your hands really steady because what we need to do is just carefully paint this into the recessed part of each eye. So looking at under the brim of the helmet, just carefully go in with the tip of the brush and just run it in that area right there. Once you're happy with the black, it's time to move on to a white. So here I'm using White Star, and this is the tricky bit because what we're aiming for is a dot of this colour on either side of that black line that we just did. So one little dot right in there, and another one just in here. And with that, the eyes are painted, so we can now move on to the final detail. And this is going to be the set markings. Now, these days, for the Far Side Enclave, those are white. And these are those like bar markings that you see across the armour. And to do this, what we should do is start out with an off-white. So here I'm going to use some Ivory Tusk. This means you've got some room to manoeuvre when it comes to a highlight where we want a pure white. So here I'm going to use some White Star once more. But first of all, we need Ivory Tusk. And to apply it, you definitely want to go for a small brush once again. And here it's up to you exactly how many of these markings you put on here. And when it comes to commanders and sergeants, there certainly will be more things like a white helmet as well but in this case what we can do is just start picking out some bars on the armor so for example on the shoulder plate just here what we can do is start out by just painting in a line and I like to have them going vertically down the armor like this so for example in this corner here just do a little line there like that in this downward motion just gradually building it up then every now and then we're just going to bulk it out slightly so here for example with a slightly wider part than angular bringing that in there like that and then color it in so it's this sort of thing to get those patterns on the armor in addition if you're using the far side enclave shoulder plate like me then this is a great opportunity to pick this part out too where we just want to get that recessed area around here. Once you're happy with the amount of markings, it's then time to look for any edges you may have gone over and highlight them to match the highlights that's underneath. So here you need a pure white, and I'm using white star for this, and I'm looking at areas like here where we did the edge highlighting on the red earlier on, and also we can use this to highlight around the edge of the far sight symbol right here. Now with this done, it's time to base the miniature, and in this case I'm going to go for a grasslands base to match Commander Farsight. And with that base now fully painted, this human auxiliary is complete and ready to do his part for the greater good. So as you've seen, making these miniatures is really fun and it's a great opportunity to put your own stamp on your army because there are no official models for it, so you have to make your own. Now I've done an example here using a guardsman as the basis for it, but you can really play around with its different extremes. So for example, if you wanted a human that's been raised entirely in the Tau Empire and has loads of cool tech, you might want to base your conversion on one of the Van Saar miniatures, or you could do something that's much more industrial using a gene stealer cultist, for example. So really got loads of options here. I definitely encourage you to give it a go. And when it comes to playing a game, just get permission from your opponent but I recommend you just use the rules for Imperial Guardsmen. So have fun banking your human auxiliaries and we'll see you again very soon.